So one of the things we have to do out here on the crane's uh, regular inspection item is the hoist rope. So I've got uh, an old hoist drum here, um, 1981 crane, so they were big and long back then. Um, and so what we have to do is we have to inspect this rope on a regular basis. And um, you can see in this case that the, the, uh, the rope, you can see that the lube gets dry over on this side and this side is it's supple and <coughs> still moving around. It's just bending and uh, twisting as the, as the hoist rope works. And what happens is that uh, this is uh, the good looking grease, the way you want it to look. And it nice, needs to be nice and uh, slick. So when the rope comes off at the top of the drum and it kicks off of the next one or comes back onto it and gets forced over as it goes, um, you want to make sure that's nice and slick when you go ahead and lube that up. I use uh, Monolec 2001. It's, uh, it soaks into the rope really nicely. So you've got three layers you're worried about. It's nice and slick. It doesn't flake off. It doesn't make a big, huge mess. You'll see guys use open gear lube and this, the, the crane is just a mess constantly with the grease. So uh, in this case, you get some down here on the, on the edge of the drum, but the rest of the crane doesn't have it. It doesn't build up in the sheaves everywhere. It doesn't get so thick that you can't see each of the wires or the strands. Uh, you want it so that you can still see the wires and strands. You don't want to get so thick that it's uh, you can't see anything to actually inspect it. Uh, and that's one of the problems that happens out in the fields. Guys will just cake it on there. Uh, part of the reason they do that is their their requirements to uh, lubricate the rope every month, which is honestly ridiculous. Uh, you just end up with a mess if you do that. Nobody can deal with the rope when they're taking the uh, crane down it's, and, you, and you can't inspect it so what you're doing is you're looking for uh, the most common break is called a crown break it's where the rope over the top of each of these strands the individual wires would break it's just due to bending modulus so it's bending over and over and over and uh, potentially from rubbing it each other as it goes off of a kick point um, and so you're looking for those crown breaks and those stick up uh, they're pretty easy to, to find some of them uh, on a hoist rope don't actually pop up along. Uh, they actually stay down really low. And you can feel them if you use an old towel and uh, rub across it. You can feel them. You'll pick them up right away. Um, but they're hard to see. Uh, so this isn't the place where I do my full inspection. This is just kind of the daily cursory uh, check that I go. All of the rope is back on the drum at this point. In a perfect world, like if I uh, had a bellman that was going to help me with an inspection or an inspector, I'd go ahead and put the block all the way on the ground, all the way down to the ground, uh, with just the weight of the block on there, all the rigging down, touching on the ground. And then I would come back here and take a look. Uh, what I'm going to look for is uh, any, any deformations that aren't showing, that aren't making it out to where I could see it out there. Um, what comes to mind is a, a bird cage I saw once. It was a crane that was nine months old and what happens is that outer, there are three layers of rope, right? And the outer layer, it uh, it, it expanded and it was, a, so we call that a bird cage. You know, you imagine a bird cage all blown up and uh, it had worked itself all the way back to the very uh, end of the drum and you couldn't see it unless the hook was all the way down to the ground. So the operator had never seen it. The crane was only nine months old, the rope was shot um, because that outer layer isn't supporting any load if it's all bird caged out. Um, another thing you would look for are uh, size changes in the rope. If you saw an hourglassing going on, you would assume you had a core break in there. Uh, if you saw strands that weren't laying nice and even like this uh, across there and uh, they were stacked on top of each other, that would be a, a deformation and you would assume that those two strands are rubbing each other so hard they're going to break uh, quicker than you, you might be able to get back to inspect it again. So in most cases, at least in my locality, that will reject a rope. Um, and then you're going to look for uh, abrasion marks where it's maybe rubbed against the building. Somebody did a poor job of uh, keeping it off of the building one time or um, just sometimes age. You, you get abrasion from those kick points or due to age. Got a good, pretty good picture of that I'll put up. Um, so this is uh, where you do the cursory visual inspection and then uh, you make sure it's laying nicely so you don't have uh, uh, spots where you have a hole in between or big spaces. 
you end up with that, you end up with a rope that'll sink in between the two. When it sinks in between the two, when it comes out, it pops hard. And that'll cause uh, early wear on the rope. And you'll want to go ahead and re-spool it to take all the rope down off of the drum and then have somebody guide it back in place. You want to make sure that's a technician or um, an iron worker who deals with cranes, that type of thing. Not uh, not just anybody back there because uh, they get, get themselves in a bad spot. Uh, when you're back here inspecting these, uh, if you have anybody that's going to be using the crane, uh, let's say you're not the operator, so you're the bellman, signal person, uh, and you're back here, you want to make sure you don't have any loose clothing. You don't want to get pulled into one of these. It, it has happened, it's, and it, this drum is not going to care. It's just going to suck you right up into it. So you do not want to be back here with these things, uh, running with any kind of loose clothing. And you really should have radio contact if you're going to be back here with the operator. Just go take a look at where I actually do the inspection. All right, so this is, uh, again, it's a LeBaire crane. Uh, commonly, the, the hoist ropes come up through the center of the tower top on these. So you got back there, we got the uh, the drum, hoist drum. Going out here, we got the boom, jib. And so what happens is that um, I like taking the block all the way down. And again, have it right next to the ground. I walk back, I take a look at everything on the drum to make sure everything underneath the drum is good. Um, <laughs> And then at that point, I grab myself a towel. I prefer an old towel, I just happen to have this one. I prefer an old towel because it breaks up real, really quickly and easily. Because you don't want something that's too strong. So I've got a little shop towel, it breaks up pretty quickly. And what I do is I just take it and I wrap it around the rope. Make sure it's nice and thick. Um, I want it to be really as thick as possible. Because um, what I'm thinking is, is that when a, if a crown break comes by, if it digs into this towel, I don't want it to be able to reach my skin because this is really stiff wire. It's not going to bend real easily if it digs into your skin and you're going to have a world of hurt. So I have a gloved hand with a towel. And then what I do is I have the person hoist up from here. You want to make sure they're hoisting up and not down because you don't want to go down and have your hand drug into that sheet. You want it to drag away and then you can just release it and then you have somebody go ahead and bring the rope, um, in that case, they'll hoist back down and bring the towel back to you. Um, but then that way they can go, it's a quick inspection. Um, but it's also very good because what happens is that any broken wires, and you're gonna feel it snag this towel. Even just little crown breaks that have them stuck out that are just hardly even visible, you'll feel the drag. You also feel the dimension of the rope. If there are any changes in that dimension of the rope, you're gonna find it. Um, you'll find, uh, deformations of uh, uh, the strands where the strands are on top of each other and they're not stacked properly um, and uh, basically anything you're gonna find it this way um, the other thing is, is that you uh, you can go ahead and yell down at the operator from here or whoever's running it if you're the operator and you have somebody else running it for this purpose you can yell down to him and say hey stop it's uh, high, you know, high is what we say here in the Seattle area. Um, and then it, you don't have to have that radio communication. There's no chance of uh, having a miscommunication. You're right there, you can yell at them. Um, the other point of, uh, of this doing a towel is if you just watch it go by, you're only seeing 50% of the rope. You're not seeing that backside. And this way you can go ahead and see that backside. Um, you're feeling it really, right? Um, and I can't tell you how many times I've, uh, when I've been out inspecting cranes where I would find ropes that are bad with this technique versus just looking at the rope go by where everything looks perfect. So this is, this is the technique that I prefer. If you have a different technique that's, that's better or you, you want to throw it into the hat, throw it down there in the comments. I want to hear about it. I'm, I'm happy to learn as much as I want to teach. So if you have a technique that's going to be great, please share it. I hope this helps you with the hoist rope inspections. It's very cursory, but it uh, should help you a little bit with some techniques that'll uh, catch, you, catch those errors. Because if you're just watching that rope go by on the sheath, you're not really inspecting that rope. You need to get out there once a month, once every two months, and go ahead and, and uh, run an inspection with the rope. The reason you need to do it so frequently is if the rope is getting old, say a rope is five years old, all that bending that goes on, you're gonna to start to have fractures in, uh, in those crown breaks. And what happens is that it's fracturing inside and outside. 
and the outside is going to show first. And I've seen ropes go from one broken wire to nine broken wires in a short span within six diameters in a matter of a month. And it's just that the ropes get old and when they start to go, they go very quickly. So you need to be out there taking a look at those things and, uh, and keep a documentation of it. And another thing a guy can do is he can go ahead and uh, put tape on there for wherever the problem is. And then in the morning you can inspect it yourself. You don't need to have a different person up here as well. Sometimes they'll use paint pens and paint it up. And then that paint will stay in there for quite a while. And, um, and then you can go ahead and find that location again and, and give it a second look without having to have uh, a bellman signal person come up and, and work through that with you. So those are the techniques I use. I hope that helps you out quite a bit. Thanks.